Snow Duck, here are your orders. Yes, sir. You will parachute at 0600 on position B4. You will proceed down the inland river indicated on your map. Now, you're cautioned to be on the alert for snipers and man-eating crocodiles. Yes, sir. A large enemy airfield is known to be located in the ravine 800 yards below the falls. This point is F8. Here you will contact the enemy. You are to surround them and wipe them out. Yes, sir. This mission must be accomplished at all costs. That is all. Prepare to jump. Pardon, I bow my stomach at you, very reverent. That's all right. Happy cherry blossoms to you, please. My mm-hmm. voice, also, 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 Shooting the rope right in the center of the middle, just like the Lone Ranger. I'll do it!
position. One guess, guess who? Who never, never starts an argument? Who never shows a bit of temperament? Who's never wrong but always right? Who never dream of starting a fight? Who gets stuck with all the bad luck? No one but Donald Duck. It has been man's constant labor to live in peace with his next-door neighbor. And on the newcomer falls the chore of getting along with the man next door. Okay. <laughs> Yes, Donald, your new neighbor. Here, Muncie, <gasps> catch! <laughs> you must be the new neighbor. I'll be right over, pal. Glad to meet you, neighbor. I wonder if I could borrow some ice cubes. Hmm? Ice cubes, Elmer. Say, uh, I can use a cube of butter, uh, and some bullion cubes, cube steak, cheese, cucumbers, cantaloupes. Yeah, I can do that. That's right. I got help. <laughs> Thanks a million, buddy. Dear Grandma, forgot to ask you one favor. Don't come in here. Please, when I go up and down, don't let somebody in here. Too finicky. Ah, springtime. The season of friendly cooperation among birds and yard birds. Hiya, neighbor. <laughs> Borrow your spade. Fork. Trowel. Sprayer. Pruners. Clippers. <laughs> Hey, neighbor! Your tools! Friendship among neighbors is a beautiful thing. But it is as fickle as the wind. Better rake them off quick. They'll ruin your lawn. This is your on-the-spot roving reporter, ready to bring you the fight of the century. All right, folks, now this is how it shapes up. The battle lines are drawn real fine. The fight's just beginning on the property line. They're getting set now. It's a tense moment. Red Hots, get your Red Hots now. That big fellow in the poppy flower shorts. Uh-oh, he's lining up at the fence. Let's watch that property line, punk. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> the crowd's really getting a big kick out of this. Nice going, Fat. It's a real seesaw battle, folks. No, I got you, punk! That just about winds it up. Old Poppy Flower is moving. The little fellas won out. No, no, it's a draw. series is on. It's a beautiful day here at Lanky Stadium. The tension is high as these two great teams clash in the first game of the World Series. DeMarco is the first batter, a right-handed hitter, batting 372. The pitcher puts his foot on the... on side Cobb. This is the important pitch. The pitcher is taking plenty of time. Rubs up the ball. Glances over to first. The second. The third. And there's the pitch. A swing. And a miss. He's out. The next batter steps up to the plate. Knocks the dirt out of his... Skurzenowenski comes to the plate, batting 297. 
the pitcher is ready for his delivery. There's the windup. The pitch. Red hot peanuts, popcorn. Pitcher is set to go again. Pops up the ball. The wind up. And the pitch. The batter gets set for a bunt. He bunts, but it's a pop ball. He's out. And it ends the inning. What a game. The score is nothing to nothing as we go into the first half of the third inning. Here comes the runner and the throw. It's going to be close. He slides and he's safe at home. Sharp single into left field. Murphy is over, fields the ball. He whips it into second, holding the runner to first base. <laughs> and it brings home run Casey to bat with the bases loaded. Oh, the tension is terrific. Casey waits, and the pitch. It's a long one, and they can't get it. He's around first. Going into second. He's coming on to third. And here he comes to the plate. The throw. <laughs> and the umpire calls him out at the plate, ending the ball game. <laughs> uh oh, that sets up a terrific argument. Casey is really laying it into the umpire. <laughs> and he's sending Casey to the showers. <laughs>
Plastic Hour with Professor Butterfield. Good morning, Junior Inventors. Good morning, Professor. As I promised you last week, this morning we are going to bake an airplane out of junk. A boil, 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 boil. Is your junk ready? Yes, sir. You betcha. All right. Then let's get started with our plane. Be sure and have a good hot fire under your pot for cooking the plastic. While your plastic is simmering, stir thoroughly until a creamy texture is attained. Now we'll pour the batter on the griddle and let it bake. You have your blueprints for the motor parts and your instructions, so while you're baking your motor, we will entertain you with some music played with all plastic instruments. Assembly toasting? Well, don't let it burn. See how light it is? It floats like a feather. I'll bet you forgot to bake your helmet. Hurry up. I'll wait for you if you'll put a wiggle on. Now, the moment we've been waiting for. The first flight in our plastic plane. Well, <laughs> how does she work? I thought so. This little number will do anything. Climbs like a rocket. <laughs> and she'll dive like a comet. Be careful, or you black out. Professor, does the plane have any faults? Yes, one fault. It melts in water. Uh -uh. So don't dare get it wet and avoid all rain clouds. Is your nose running? Well, wipe it off. Wipe it off. Are your pants slipping? <laughs> well, don't get caught with your pants down. Be 
sure and keep your eye on your wings. plastic planes, you'll be in the dome. Don't you think it's about time you came in for a landing? Did your plane fall apart? That's funny. <laughs> you know, it always happens that way to me, too. Tune in again next week, and I'll have a new recipe. I guess it's just a fair weather flame. <laughs> Peaceful tonight.
sure put it over on the Sarge. Didn't we, pal? <laughs> Let's go come back over, all right. It's me. Oh, you little shrimp! I got you! Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Thanks.
and go get that.
Relax. Just relax. Let your imagination go. Now turn out the light. Ah, there. That's better. My story begins. A woman speaks. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm too old. I can't swim. I can't swim. Isn't the view lovely from up here, Harold? Harold! Harold! You're pushing me! Look, George! The ape! The ape! He's behind you! I sell just six more subscriptions, I'll win a real moxie bicycle with a bell and a horn and coaster brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're gone and bent the wheel. What's this? Then you and dumb that starts to interrupt your dad's stick to the Oh, just one more big job. Skip for the dough. <laughs> big Louie chuckled. Leave them other guys holding the sack. And then... Big Louie Debney's thoughts were interrupted as Dopey Davis nervously entered the room, his shifty eyes furtively glancing over his shoulder, as if in apprehension. Big Louie leaped to his feet. Okay. He shouted. Hand over them coils. I ain't got him, Big Louie. Honest, I ain't. I'm innocent. Innocent, I tell you. You, you gotta help me. You just gotta... You gotta, Louie. You, you can't let him do it. They're here. They're gonna get us. Scram. Not so fast, pretty boy. You've got them poor roots. Give him over, rat. I ain't got him, copper. Honest, I ain't. Well, then who has got him? Who's got him? Why, he's got him. Aha! Just as I thought. Aren't you ashamed? A big guy like you stealing from this poor little innocent. <laughs> Just a little girl who's lost her pearls. Oh, dear. I don't know where to find them. Come on, Rat! Give me them pearls! I just know they're around here someplace. Oh, bother. Now, look, Chum. We don't want to have to get nasty, do we? No. So give the nice lady back her. <gasps> Kidnapped! Kidnapped? Okay, where's the dame? Sure, and won't she be giving old Patty back the little woman? Okay, Bob. You asked for it. I ain't got a way to make you talk. Mm -hmm. Clark! The hot iron! Leslie J. Clark, Hot Irons. <laughs> hot! You just ain't kidding, Buster. No, you're not. No, you're not. This little number's just about the hottest, hottest job in town. Yes, <laughs> hot. Woo, woo. Uh, say, this is hot. Hot! <laughs> yes, sir, Bob. You're boiling over, boiling over. This one's selling like little hot cakes, little hot cakes. Hot, hot, hot cakes. Uh, right off the griddle. Griddle, griddle. Oh, oh, oh. Hot, hot, hot. Here, son. Hold these. Ouch! Hot! Let's see now. Where was I? Oh, yes. Oh, diggity. I've just got to find my pearls. Hello, 
Mabel. This is Pauline. <laughs> Have you seen my pearls around there any place? Well, you know they're a priceless heirloom. Handed down from my great, 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 great grandmother. Or somebody, I think. Hello, hello, hello. And now get this. First, it's the pearls that's missing. <laughs> oh, dear. Somebody wants to use the vine. Thanks for calling. Bye. Now it's the pearls and the whole dame oh. that's missing. What dame? What dame? He's asking. Why this dame? The dame whose pearls you snatched. Now you're going to cough them up? Or am I going to have to cut them out of you? <laughs> Stop. Who's that? J. Harold King, the author. That man's innocent. Okay, then, wise guy. Who done it? Who stole them pearls? Who stole the pearls? Why, why, he's a... Oh, dear me. Who is a... Mm, 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 oh, pardon me. Oh, oh, yes. The thief is... Yes, yes. Out with it! <laughs> Hennessy. Hennessy? Uh-huh. Not you, Hennessy. Yes. H. U. Hennessy. That's me. I done it. I done it. But you'll never take me alive. And you, you little rat, you got me into this. Take that! Oh, you got me. Let's get out of out of here. Take a powder, beat it, or we'll take the rat. Get the hot seat. Scram! <laughs> Nothing there, is there? Well, possibly it was only your imagination. Well, 
enjoying a nice spin through the country in his new Zoom V8. Yes, the car that is streamlined with floating power. Super balloon tires and 25 miles to the gallon. Good luck, Mr. Duck. One guess this who Who never, never starts an argument Who never shows a bit of temperament Who's never wrong but always right Who never dream of starting a fight Who gets stuck with all the bad luck No one but Donald Duck Thank <laughs> you. 
Julien. Hot dog. Super duper laughed. <laughs> Yeah. 
sweet disposition. One guess, guess who? Who never, never starts an argument? Hmm? Who never shows a bit of temperament? Who's never wrong but always right? Who never dream of starting a fight? Who gets stuck with all the bad luck? No one but Donald Duck. This is the home of Donald Duck, where everyone does their chores willingly. Even Donald's three little nephews. Uh-oh, they were here just a moment ago. Now I wonder where those little scamps could... Aha! Uh -huh. They're playing again. A little later. Stop! Permit me to introduce myself. I am the voice of child psychology. <clears throat> now, I'm here to show you the modern method of getting their cooperation. How? First, you've got to join in their game. Become a pal. Be one of them. Get it? Okay. After I end it some lunch. Go to it, boy. <laughs> No, Donald. You walk the plank. Okay. My son, Captain. No, no, stupid. You're getting the idea, but you're playing too rough. But the worst was yet to come. For a real circus is coming to town with lions, tigers, and complete with real man eating pick me Hey, they're back. This time they're playing cannibals. It's a perfect setup. Now you can get that old firewood cut. All right, now, fella, look dignified. That's it. Act like you don't see him. And remember, go along with the gag. <laughs> side of the yard. Hey, 
We're in, buddy. Now you'll have enough firewood to last all winter. Six nephews? Yup, only three. Yes, the real cannibals. 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 Light on fire. Police are coming. Oh, eat the bomb. Eat the bomb. Eat the bomb. Eat the Eat the bomb. 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 Eat the Drink a treat, drink a treat, drink a treat for Halloween. Better give a treat that's good to eat if you want to keep life serene. Drink a treat, drink a treat, drink a treat, drink a treat, drink a treat the whole night through. Little scallywags with fiendish gags can make it tough on you. So when ghosts and goblins by the score, ring the bell on your front door. Better not be stingy or your nightmare will come true. Is the real thing in it, right out of Shakespeare. 
Neck of bottle, tail of coat, and uh, whiskers from the billy goat. <laughs> Here you are, Nigel. Uh, repulsive. <laughs> Delightfully gruesome reaction. <laughs> Kids, this stuff's loaded. What did the hot get slapped? I don't believe it. Trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat for Halloween. When the pumpkin shells cast evil spells, your little white house turns green. Your little white house turns green. Your little white house turns green. Every ghost is a ghost if you got a witch's broom. And if you want your gate to circulate, oh ho! We can do that too. Trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat for Halloween. When ghosts and goblins by the score ring the bell on your front door, you better not be stingy or your nightmares will come true. Now, are you gonna treat or not? Watch now, run around. Kids, this pigeon's a pushover. What's the what? Oh, what? Eh, got two. Hmm? I just been itching to cast a spell on you. Hocus pocus magic shower, put his feet within my power. Ah, what was that stuff? Feet? Kick out that key. And it does you. Now take a longer start. About a mile or two. Get ready, kids. Here we go. I thought he'd listen to reason. All right, all right, you got it. Come, Beauty Bob, it's nearly dawn. <laughs> yeah, it mustn't be late, goodness me. Goodbye, goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Asha. Bye-bye. So when ghosts and goblins by the score, ring your bell or pound your door, better not be stingy or your nightmares will come true.
February the 29th. Dear Diary, This morning was much like any other morning, and when I took my usual walk, I had no idea that on this day I was destined to find the girl of my dreams. Well... <laughs> I suppose the whole thing was my fault. I was just a lonesome bachelor searching for my idea. Oh, dear. <whistles> ah, yes. I'm quite impulsive by nature. And yet I can't say I was unhappy as a bachelor. Though at times, I felt I was missing something. Help! Help! Save me! Oh, darn. My technique was simple. I swept her off her feet. My search was over. At last, I'd found my dream girl. Took her to the latest movies. Just two crazy kids. We dine at the best places. I took her to my favorite spot. And she took me to hers. And when I could resist her no longer, I kissed her. Ah, I knew I was winning her over. I was invited to meet the family. Donald? Meet my brothers. <laughs> and this is my mother. Hey, what's the name? Donald Duck, Mom. Hmm. And this is Daddy. Ah, yes. They were my kind of people. I knew the time was now to pop the question. Ah, tonight's the night. Here comes Rainbow. Rainbow can't come back to school next year, Dad. I am right at home. Be down as soon as I powder my nose, dreamer. Alone at last. The stage was all set for my big moment. At last, my dreams had come true. Her family didn't feel they had lost a daughter, but had gained a son. Goodbye, Daisy. She helped plan our honeymoon. Them. Uh, she was loyal. Uh, she was sensitive. <gasps> and had a wonderful sense of value. Hmm. We drove directly to our dream cottage. Alone at last. With the honeymoon over, we settled down to domestic life and got to know each other uh, better. What's the matter? I'll never forget that first evening when I return home.
he had prepared my favorite dish. Dinner, sir. And how surprised I was to see her family. After a hearty meal, I went for my favorite chat. The garbage buster. I began to notice a change in Daisy. What had happened to this beautiful thing between us? Was this the wedded bliss I dreamed of? I was losing my identity. I had become a, a robot. Cut the grass. Wash the dishes. Beat the rug. Pick up the cat. Donald, Donald, dreamer boy, wake up. <laughs> Dear diary, it was a narrow escape. Though I was born when I kissed her, I died when we parted. But I lived for a little while. No fishing, no swimming, no drinking, no fires, no going over to the invader if you go into any of that section, but don't do that either. And remember, don't molest the bears. And now have fun, 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 fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> and there's a tourist for each and every one of you. <laughs> oh, yes. Last year, we had one complaint of stealing. Shame. We won't mention any names, will we? Ha. <laughs> but if it happens this year, the supreme penalty. I expect you to make with the atmosphere and mix with the twist. That's a must. Okay, mix it up, boys. Mix it up. Pick it up. 
Let's keep the park clean. Clean, pick up this and this and this and that and this over here and this and this. Go over and get that. And go over and get.
perhaps you are interested in an aeroplane? Now, this little job, a beauty, is yours for absolutely no down payment. No? Absolutely not. Yes, a little matter of insurance. <laughs> Thank you. Little does he know that I, Ben Buzzard, am the beneficiary. <laughs> Contact. Okay. Contact. Follow the leader. Eh? Okay. <laughs> I'll lead.
chestnut curl. Come front and smoke hot slabs. Guess what? I'm not a man, I saw. Guess what? With four chunks in your hand.
De bom is klaar, baas. Mooi. Hij moet om middernacht afgaan. Oké, okay, baas. Zo. Wat een verrassing voor Suprem. De raps. Ja, <laughs> dat wordt een knalfeestje. <laughs> Heeft u al een koerier besteld, baas? Natuurlijk, man. Die sukkel is al onderweg. Jee. Wat nou als die bom te vroeg afgaat, baas? Dan nemen we een nieuwe koerier, toch? Ik heb mazzel, zo veel mazzel, hoe mijn geluk zou zijn. Niks dan voorspoed, alles gaat goed, hoe mijn geluk zou zijn. Ik 
op mijn geluksdag zijn. Bent u nog even de bel? Zo ja, prijs u dan gelukkig. Maar let wel, tot middernacht is het nog steeds vrijdag de dertiende. Breek geen spiegels. Laat geen zwarte kat uw pad kruisen. Ga niet onder ladders door. Oh, <laughs> 
One guess, guess who? Who never, never starts an argument? Hmm? Who never shows a bit of temperament? Who never dream of starting a fight? Gotcha. Who gets stuck with all the bad luck? No one but Donald Duck. Yeah. A symphony in color and song echoes deep in the tropics of the South Americans. A treasure of rare and exotic birds. Here in a jungle paradise, Nature's little songsters blend in unforgettable harmonies. Ah, oh, very charming. But let us be on our way, for a treat awaits us behind every twig and vine. Well, enough of that guy. No one bothers with the Araquan. He's the slap-happy clown of the jungle. But wait, there's something wrong with this picture. What's this? Bird Lovers Photographic Expedition. A bird! Hmm. <sighs> 
Donald Duck. Pretty, ain't it? But more about that later. I live next door. Ain't quite so elegant, but it's comfy. But come on in and set a spell, and let me tell you a story. Me and my boy was batching it, and one evening, as I was preparing the evening meal... Dinner's ready, son. Come and get it. <laughs> now don't get impatient. Mmm, mmm. Got something good tonight. Beans. <laughs> Bet you can't hardly wait. <laughs> huh? Hmm. Never satisfied. Oh, something's got to be done about that boy. Mighty pretty, don't it, son? Yep. Ain't it a pity we don't all live in a pretty backyard? But that's just part of growing up, boy. Being dissatisfied with home vittles. You know, the grass always looks greener on the other side of the fence. Oh, yes, sir. A land of plenty. But it ain't. Not for us beetles, anyway. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget. I had to learn the hard way. I'd been eyeing that pasture for a long time. So, what was there to do but go and have a look-see? It was a paradise, all right. Just full of fancy foods. Phil, all right, but unknown to me at the time, trouble was on its way. Oh. Ah, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. 
I was really on the spot, and there was no way out, so I pulled back and nailed him with my right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must have got him right on the button. Was I glad to be back in my own backyard? Home never looked so good. And do you know what I'm a thinking? I just wonder if beans is such bad vittles after all. Surprise for dessert, Sonny. Watermelon. Confidentially, neither have we. But it seems that long ago, these little creatures were plentiful. But because of an inborn love for travel and adventure, the boodle beetle is now a rare little bug. The bug collector, or <clears throat> the entomologist, regards this little bug as a prize for his collection. Going somewhere, Sonny? Well, I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry if I were you. There's danger lurking out in them woods, and you're just setting yourself for a heap of trouble. You know, there's not many of us boodles left, and it's just because too many of them have set out across that stream and never come back. And here you go, a setting your cap for the same medicine. Sit down, Sonny, and let me tell you a story. When I was a young pumpkin, full of vinegar, <laughs> just like yourself. I had ideas of adventure, too. So, I packed my bag and said goodbye to my home. <laughs> I'm a little funny about this sentimental stuff. And set out for what was going to be the doggondest adventure. I'll have to admit, it was pretty fascinating at first. Thing like this hat. Uh oh, what's this? Big tall things that disappear in the sky. Whew. 
Phew. A bug sure has to be careful when he's out looking for adventure. But unknown to me at the time, there was lurking in the forest a horrible monster. What's that about? Yeah, yeah. Hitch that's about what? Huh? Oh, show it. I give up. Well, I guess I must have walked hundreds of miles that first day. I was just picking them up and laying them down. I just didn't feel up to it. So I thought I'd lay down for a little shut-eye and tackle it in the morning. Well, suddenly, I had the feeling I wasn't alone. And there, on top of the mountain, I saw a most amazing thing. Well, being a curious little fellow, I decided to investigate. And there it was, a horrible monster, millions of feet high. I sneaked out to get a better look, and suddenly, it moved. Huh? I looked again. Two hideous eyes glared at me. A bigger. That's him! Hurrah! I can't him! I can't him! <laughs> So, there I was, headed for I don't know what. It was simply terrifying. I tried again and again to escape, but it was no use. If only I had listened to Mama. Just think of it. The famous Professor Duck. Oh, boy. I can just run more duck. Now what? <laughs> the door opened, and there he was. Suddenly, I realized that this was my last chance. It was now or never. It's done. <laughs> little bug. And do you think I cared what folks thought about the sentimental stuff? <laughs> no siree. So you see, Sonny, home isn't such a bad place after all. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking. For all I know, that monster may be looking for me yet. It's better than it's ever been before. 
before. You used to walk a mile for beans, but now they bring them to you. And all the generals say hello as though they really knew you. You better pass your physical examination. Oh, sure. That's a sludge. Okay, buddy. Through that door. Three quarters. Chest. Fourteen and a half. Sleeve length. Seventeen three quarters. So 
чтобы ждать. And don't move a muscle. See? Yes, sir. Attention! <laughs> I said don't move! Army, not the army anymore. No, the army. 